the Mario. Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go do the Mario. Oh my, I don't like the way Mario just winked at me now. Anyway, welcome to Mario's Picross. I'm here with Mimi as always. I'm Jockey. I always have Mimi with me for the Mario Let's Play. She's here on my lap hanging out. I'll show a picture here. Part of me wishes she wasn't digging her claw into me, but anyway, this is Mario's Picross. It's been a little while since I've done a Mario game, after all. I haven't done one since Super Mario Bros. 3 or Super Mario Land, I want to say. And you know, pretty much what I need to come open and say is that I don't have any proper way of recording SNES or Genesis games, anything 16-bit or beyond. I've tried doing it with games like Sonic or Castlevania 4, uh, but it ended up not working. It didn't come out very good. But anyway, this is Picross. I know how to play Picross. Let's just do the standard mode. This is a Japanese-only game, by the way, so... Uh, not everything is perfectly translated, and you probably don't know about this game, but this came out in 95 for the Game Boy. And uh, it's just a little game. I don't know much about it myself. I've only done a few puzzles trying it out. And I really just want to play it because I'm a fan of Picross, and I'm a fan of Mario. Don't give me no hints. Anyway, it looks like we got a bit of a time limit that I assume will go down if we mess things up more. Uh, but... This is a pretty easy looking puzzle right so far. We got 15 by 15 here, a couple of 15s actually. If you don't want to play Picross, I suppose this is a little confusing, but basically uh, there are numbers to the side, and those ones are what we should expect to see. So for example, this is a 2 and then a 3, and they're separate, not 23, they're 2 and 3, and you can kind of see a space in between them. But because of that we know, okay, the first pair of cubes here is going to be too long, so that won't be any longer than that. And the second pair will be three long. Well, we can't make it go longer this way, because that's where the puzzle ends, so it has to be here. And since that's all that, we can cross all this out since there's nothing else that's going to be here. And you can just use process of elimination to make your way throughout the whole puzzle, just like that. I've been playing a lot of Picross games for a while. Uh, the first one I kind of got into was actually Pokemon Picross, which is not actually a very good game. Like, they, uh, they have a lot of microtransactions and having to get cubes to continue, and it's just not very enjoyable, fun little Picross. Although I do like that the Pokemon are the solutions to the puzzles. I don't know that that's the case here, I don't think it is, uh, in terms of there being like Mario puzzles and such. It might just be like Mario is here, so it counts as a Mario game, I suppose, in the same sense of Wrecking Crew. Now, uh, in this case, we know there's gotta be a six following the one. Well, there's the one. One, two, three, four, five, six. The six can only fit here, so that has to be it. I did not intend to put that there. I just lost two minutes or seconds or something for doing that. Uh, whoops. Things are shaping up here. I do kind of wish, and this is something that most of the Picross games do, is they, uh, they white out rows that are certainly complete. Like this 15 here, uh, that number there would be whited out because we know nothing else can go there. We're done with that. And it allows you to just kind of see the bolded out numbers and where you're supposed to be solving things. Uh, we have plenty of time, doesn't really matter. Okay, that works. So with that, we actually... Oh, would you look at that? We made a Game Boy. So maybe they are kind of themed after Nintendo and Mario kind of stuff. I'm interested now. Mimi, are you interested? What do you think, Mimi? She's just kind of sleeping right now. How to play. I might as well just see what the tutorial holds. Hi, ki- Or, sorry, Mario's talking. Hiya, kids! Or maybe it's like old Mario, because this is before 64. Although, I don't, 95, I don't know when Charles Martinet... Because he did it in a game before 64, the Mario, the Go Fish game, but I don't know. I don't know what came first. Hiya, kids! It's time for us to solve the mystery of Picross! The mystery lies in the numbers on the top. And the left side. Of the window, okay. Which together will help you draw the secret picture. If you solve the puzzle correctly, the entire picture will be shown. It's the letter N. Here are the rules to solve in the mystery. The numbers above the columns tell you how many boxes you need to chisel in downward... To, it, uh. Yeah, this is all stuff they kind of figured out so far. This one's a five. So you will need to chisel in five consecutive blocks. And yeah, because that's... I don't get why the theme of this whole thing is chiseling, and why Mario's wearing like a hard hat for it, but I don't know, I guess it's just his adventure. It's solving a mystery, I suppose. Maybe this is what Mystery Land from Mario Party 2 is based off of. Let's do one easy puzzle just to start off. I don't know if I want to make this a series. Maybe if I have like nothing else to talk about and I just want to have some fun, uh, then we can do that. I also tried doing a hint round one time. Wow, this is the easiest puzzle. Look at this. 
I mean, I guess Luigi needed some representation, so they just gave us the letter L. Let's see what the hint does. Like, give us a hint. Uh, it looks like it's selecting two random areas. Like so. And it just fills it out for us. Okay, I mean, that's kind of like what they do in the Pokemon one. It just kind of tells you what it is you need to do, just to get you started. But most of the time, there's these... Uh, ones that fill up the whole puzzle, like in this case a 10, because it's a 10 by 10. Or if it's a 5, it's a 5 by 5. Uh, those ones automatically know, okay, that goes there, I can work off of that. Because since we put that 10 there, we know, okay, the 4 won't stretch out to these areas. Because if it reached over there, it would be more than 4. You can also figure that kind of stuff out from, like, two pairs of something. Like if, for example, it's a 15 by 15 and you have a 292, that automatically fills out. And even if it doesn't fill out all the way, uh, for example, if it's a 10 by 10 and there's uh, a 7, well, if it's a 7, it could either be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, and it would fill out those exact blocks, or it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, did you notice something? It could also be, like, in the middle somewhere, but if you notice something, there are certain areas where it will definitely be. It will definitely be in these middle two, no matter where you put the 7, so you can fill those out. The whole game of Picross is process of elimination, and that you're getting used to. Looks like we have a little square block at the bottom there. This might be a music note, like if you're Mario and you're jumping on the music note platforms from Mario 3. I think this will be a music note, that's my prediction. And with that we solved it, it certainly is a music note. Uh, this is all easy Picross, let's try one more hard one for this part. I've enjoyed doing Picross for quite a while. I I, like I said, I got into it because of the Pokemon one, but that one isn't spectacular. But it did help me teach me kind of the basics, because it had the hint mechanic that this game also shares. So maybe this isn't too bad of a start to pick Ross uh, for you guys if you haven't played it yourself. I think I have a pretty good idea where this one is going, just uh, from the immediate shape. As much as Picross is one of my favorite games to play in my off time, it's not exactly the kind of game I can do for a Let's Play. Maybe a live stream sort of thing, but at the same time, I don't really do those on my channel, at least not yet. As I was mentioning much earlier, I am having that issue right now with recording 16-bit games, and I am planning on getting a better recording software, um, hopefully by, like, uh, next year at least. Because, of course, I always take my breaks during December, and, uh, that would be a perfect opportunity to, you know, get a recording device then, one that could better handle the Super Nintendo games, or the Genesis games. Oh, would you look at that, we did it. You don't actually have to fill in the X's, by the way. It's just so you can see more visually, like, okay, something certainly does not go there. This is also something I'm recording mainly because uh, currently I'm playing Final Fantasy II, which some of you may have seen my tweet where I said, yeah, unfortunately I lost all... <clears throat> I lost all the progress grinding in Final Fantasy 2, which is rather unfortunate. And I'm immediately getting back to work with all of that. I'm actually working on it later today, actually, but... You know, I'll get back to where I was... Ooh, I didn't mean to erase all that. I'll, I'm getting back to where I was, and I'm doing all I can. And I hope that the, uh... The channel won't just be covered with Fire Emblem Gaiden because of it. This is why I'm trying to do games like this, just on the off time. And I'll try to do other one-off games eventually, in time anyway. This is also so I can get some Mario content out while I'm also trying to get the recording software to get eventually Super Mario World to come out. And there might also be some other spin-off games in like Game Boy and NES for both Mario and other series I need to get back to that I might want to try out. Like Kirby, for example, was my earliest Let's Plays, and uh, I haven't touched it since I did Kirby's Dream Land 2, which is a while ago. But there are some spin-off games I know on the Game Boy, actually one that predates Kirby's Adventure, I think, even. I don't see the point of erasing blocks at all, because if you put it in the wrong place, it's automatically erased, and you lose time, and you know, okay, it doesn't go there. If it if you put it somewhere and it doesn't get automatically erased, you know it goes there, so you have no reason to erase it. That's a little weird. I'm actually not sure where this one is going. Is this like a high heel? I can't really tell right now. Oh, he did it. What is that supposed to be? I still can't tell, actually. It is a high heel. It's a little weird looking. I don't know why there's a thing coming off of the front. Let's do one more level before I end the recording session, just for fun. Three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, three. Mimi Claw. Ow. 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 Sorry, Mimi. Mimi. What's up? What's up? 
this number here, as you can see, is one whole number. There's no splits here, so we know that this is continuous. So now we have one, two, three, four, five. Well, down here, it can only fill up to seven. We need it to be nine, so we know these two have to be here. And then we can use that to determine that's a two, that's a one. There is a process, a routine, if you will, to going about Picross levels, as you can see. And with that, we've solved the puzzle. What exactly is this here? Is it a turtle shell, maybe? Oh no, it's just bread. Very odd looking gridded bread at the front. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I gotta go do some other stuff. Maybe some grinding in Final Fantasy 2. I'll see you guys in the next video and I hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching.